God, Lord Jesus, bless the eyes and ears of the listeners, and I plead the blood of Jesus on this. In the name of Jesus, amen. We're going to talk about two things. Now get your notebooks and write this down. Fear of the Lord. And then we're going to talk about worship. Very important. So write this down. Okay. Fear of the Lord and worship. So, you hang around older Christians, right? You'll eventually hear the words, you know, like God-fearing or the fear of the Lord. So, what does this mean? What does it mean? Why on earth should anyone be afraid of a loving God who sent his son on a rescue mission to seek and save lost people? Which is Luke 19.10, John 3.16, right? So why should we be fear of the Lord? Why, why, why? Well, that Hebrew word translated fear in verses like Deuteronomy 10, 20, fear the Lord your God and serve him, can have different nonces, right? So if sometimes we mean, sometimes it means to be terrified or filled with dread due to the threat of judgment. It also conveys the idea of being overwhelmed with a sense of awe and reverence. So, one of the fear of the Lord is reverence. Okay? Or you could put awe. Like I was in when I saw him. I was in awe. <laughs> okay? Um, and what does a God-fearing person feel? Okay? So, when the characters of Scripture experience the majesty of God, a reverent Fear or respect for all is always their response. People draw back and fall to the ground, John 18, 6. They tremble, Exodus 19, 16, 2018. They beg for relief, right? So this is because the glory of God is weighty, weighty. And that's the literal meaning of the Hebrew word glory. So the literal meaning, glory, write it down, glory. Is the same thing as weighty. Okay. From the fear of the Lord. Kind of draw it out like that. Okay. So, um, that's the literal word right there for glory. <clears throat> so, God's holiness has a shattering effect on sinners. Isaiah felt like. He felt this kind of heavy dread. He spoke of being ruined or coming undone, Isaiah 6, 5, right? So, why do we cultivate fear of the Lord? Why? So, having a proper sense of awe at the person and presence of God is good and healthy, okay? We develop this kind of holy respect through hearing God's word. Deuteronomy 4.10 and Deuteronomy 17.19. The Bible demonstrates that fear of the Lord fosters faith. So fear of the Lord, you just put fear of the Lord equals faith. Okay, fear of the Lord equals faith. And commitment to his purpose. Write that down. And commitment. Oh, well, you're not know, spelled. Commitment to his purpose. Okay? So you're, you're going to do what his word tells you to do. Commitment to his purpose, okay? You want to do, and that's Exodus 14, 31. So this deep reference also sparks obedience. Okay? So fear of the Lord is obedience. Write it down. The fear of the Lord is also obedience. Okay, Deuteronomy 6, 2. And typically cultivates a gratitude of praise. Write down praise. Talking about fear of the Lord here. That's Psalms twenty two twenty three. 23. It leads to wise living, Proverbs 9, 10. 
So let's put wisdom. No, just put wise living for sure because you need to live it. You need to live it. And that's Proverbs 9.10. And the blessings of God. The blessings of Okay, which is, oh my goodness, Psalms 115.13, Psalms 128.1, Proverbs 22.4. Okay, so the book of Psalms recounts spiritual blessings for those who fear and honor the Lord. And here's some recurring reminders of what you will receive. Okay, receive God's salvation and protection. Receive God's blessings and provision. Receive God's commands. Receive God's love and compassion. Okay. So what are some of the signs that a person could use? Some holy fear of God. A cavalier attitude about sin. And ir irreverent view of the gospel. A cynical or mocking perspective. On spiritual matters. Disdain for things that God values. Disregard of or disobedience to. The clear teaching of God's word. A central theme in the book of Psalms. Is the fear of the Lord. The image on the. Wait a minute. This is the. Right here. Fear of the Lord. Reverence and awe. Glory. Glory equals weighty. That's what that means in Hebrew. Fear of the Lord is faith, commitment to his purpose, obedience, praise, wise living, and blessings of God. Okay, so let's go over now to worship. What does it mean to worship? Okay, this is, I want you to write this stuff down. So say the word worship, and many immediately think of singing, worship songs, right? In special rooms designated for special ser worship services, you know, in a big cathedral or at a certain time of the week. But is that an accurate description of what the Bible means by worship? What is the meaning of worship? And I told you, Jesus told me, told me that your, your prayers take you to heavenly realms, but your worship takes you straight to the throne of God. So what does he mean? Okay, so one of the most common Old Testament words for worship means to bow down. Okay, one of the most common words means to bow down. Okay, so this Hebrew verb, and it's a verb, conveys the idea of showing honor, expressing devotion, and paying homage. So honor Devotion. Let's put this here. Honor. Devotion. And homage. Honor, devotion, and homage. Write that down. Okay. So, our English word, worship, is actually a shortened form of the word worship. So... The English form, uh, what what this is, is called worth ship. Translated in English, and you have worship. Worth ship. You see that? Okay, which means the state of having worth or value. Write that down beside of it. I can't write it all down. The state of having the state of having worth or value. Put that right beside worship. Okay. So strictly speaking, worship is not a religious term. So when we devote our time, energy, and money and emotion to something or someone, we are saying, here is what I value. Okay. You could say we are worshiping that thing or person, even if we never literally bow down to it. Okay? So if you are, for example, supporting not just my ministry, 
a ministry, somebody who's feeding you, teaching you, then you are saying, this. I value this. I value. You know, if you are, uh, what's it say? If you're spending your money um, at a concert, you know, and supporting that, you're saying, this is what I value. Okay, so it shows. So the universe... The universality, universality of worship. Since worship is a question of what or whom a person values, nobody can truthfully say, I'm not into worship. So, it's not a thing which a man can decide whether he will be a worshiper or not. A worshiper, he must be. The only question is, what will he worship? Every man worships is a born worshiper, okay? So the object of worship, the Bible calls people to see the one true God as the great worth or value of the universe and to live for his glory. You got to live for it, people. Isaiah 40, 25. So we are to love our creator, not lesser, created things. We're not supposed to love the created things. We love the creator with all of our hearts. Deuteronomy 6, 5, Romans 1, 20 through 23. This means giving God our primary attention, allegiance, and affection. So to sum it up, worship is a mindset and a lifestyle. So write that down. Worship, worship is a mind set and lifestyle okay she said so it's the moment by moment practice of lifting our eyes to heaven and saying from the heart lord i want to live right here and right now in a way that brings you honor that's what that is so Someone has said that we can tell what we worship by, we can tell what we worship or what we most value by looking at, looking at someone's, looking at your calendars, considering where your minds naturally wonder, you know, when we're not really engaged. You can tell what you most value, what you worship by listening to what comes out of someone's mouth. Or by examining how we spend our money and noting what thrills us when it happens or what angers us when it doesn't. Okay, so take that down. Now let's write this down. Okay, the top 10 words of worship used by the writer of Psalms and the number of times they appear. So the word praise is written in Psalms 200. And 29 times. The word sing. Is written in Psalms. 79 times. The word rejoice. 44 times. In the book of Psalms. Just This is just in the book of Psalms. The word delight. 23 times. And song, 26 times. Okay. Uh, thanksgiving, the word thanksgiving, giving thanks. I'll just put thanks. Is 22 times. Shout. The word shout, 19 times. Okay, I'm going to have to go over here. Uh, be glad. The word be glad 17 times. Um, offering. Sixteen times. And extol. Ten times. Okay, so just a little something for you to do there. Now, as I told you, look up words that you don't know what they mean. If you see anything on this right here that you don't know what it means, 
Look it up. Write it down. So worship is to bow down to honor, devotion, or pay homage to. The word, the English word for worship, worthship. What's it worth to you? Okay. It's a mindset and a lifestyle of praise, singing, rejoicing, delighting, songs, thank, giving thanks, shouting, be glad, offerings, extol. Okay, and over here, fear of the Lord is reverence and awe of God. Glory equals weighty. Fear of the Lord equals faith. Commitment to his purpose. I keep telling you, his whole purpose is for you to be a doer. His purpose is for you to do his will. Okay, obedience is for you to do his will. Praise, right over there with worship. Wise living is for you to do his will. Blessings of God, okay, is what you will receive if you do his will. Okay, all right. I hope each one of you understand this. If you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments section. And God bless you. And make sure you write this stuff down in your notebooks and study. I think I called all the scripture out to you as I was going along. But um, let's take our... Um, let's take our worship to the Lord. Where am I at? Right there. Let's take our worship to the Lord and let it be seen in your everyday life. Let God see it. Let people see it and be that lamp. I just did my video on the lamp. That's you're supposed to be the lamp and let the light fill up the lamp. So you, we are supposed to be witnesses for Jesus Christ people. Okay. And we got to show the Lord how much we really love him on a personal level. Okay. This is also, there is, we have to do something for the outward man, for the other people, okay? That's a big part of it, second commandment. But we have to do the first commandment, which is love the Lord thy God with all of our heart. All of it. Not just with your mouth, with your heart. <clears throat> all right? In Jesus' name. If you don't know Jesus, ask him to be your savior. If you do know him, get into his word more than you ever have. All right? I thank you all for being here. I thank you for those of you that are supporting. I really appreciate it. And thank you for your offerings and supporting the kingdom of God and the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for letting me know that you're growing, that you're actually learning that this is helping you. Those of you that are sending me messages, thank you so much for that. You know, it's a blessing to know that you're actually getting some help here and you're growing. All right. In Jesus name, God bless y'all.